Good afternoon and welcome back to Zoneminder TV. I'm host Isaac. Today we're going to be doing a video on adding a local webcam or other V4L capture device to Zoneminder. Uh, if you've been following along, we installed Zoneminder 1.36 on Ubuntu 20.04 and I've just done it, updated it, so we're at 1.3624. None of that matters. So without further ado, so if we take a look over here, you can see I've typed a few things. When you plug in your webcam, it'll, Linux will create these devices. Uh, you might only see one. Don't be alarmed if you see more than one. It's fairly normal. Your modern webcams and things, a lot of hardware on them, and they get referenced different ways in terms of the drivers. Uh, we're primarily interested in Dev Video Zero. Uh, as you can see, it's owned by Root. It's in the video group. Uh, now, on a default install of Ubuntu and most distributions, ZoneMinder will not be added to this video group, so we'll not have permission to access this webcam. I have to give it permission. And this is the command that'll do it. sudo usermod minus a is for add, g is for video group. And on Ubuntu, ZoneMinder runs as the WW data. So we'll do that. And now since Linux caches uh, group membership, we actually have to restart ZoneMinder for that change to actually take effect. All right. So if we go over here and choose local instead of FFmpeg, in ZoneMinder 1.37, I have added support to the FFmpeg monitor type for V4L URLs, but in 1.36, it's not there yet. So our device was dev video zero. I want to leave this at video for Linux version 2. I do still have support for one, but I don't know where you would find a system that has that. On a webcam, you're probably looking at device channel 0. Uh, as you can see, uh, other you know capture cards you might have multiple inputs, like 32 or you know, 4, 16, 32, whatever. Webcams just have 0. Device format. Uh, in North America, we use NTSC. Most of the rest of the world, PAL, and obviously there's all kinds of other options for different parts of the world. You're going to have to figure out for yourself what you need. For us, I'm in North America, so I'm going to choose NTSC. Capture palette, we're going to leave as auto. Um, there are options here that might give you better performance. Um, it, it, that's a whole level of complexity that we're not going to get into today. And again, the card has to support these, and not all do. So... You can leave it as auto, and hopefully ZoneMinder will pick something that works. Uh, now, multi-buffering, what this is, and again, you, you probably don't need to play with this. Um, this is a, a video Linux, video for Linux thing where it uses, sets up multiple chunks of RAM, and, uh, you know, it's capturing into them multiple at a, at a time. You play around with this, and you can see if you get either smoother video or better performance, more FPS. Uh, captures per frame. Some video capture cards, the chip doesn't settle down fast enough. So it, you switching between channels, let's say you've got a four port card and you know, the reminder tells it, okay, switch from channel zero to channel one. It takes time to get there. Uh, and so you, what you might have to do is set this to two or even up to four I've seen. Uh, so basically it captures four times before it actually gets a new image from the input. So if you're seeing, you know, in a multiple video input situation where it's not switching over and, and, and getting the same video on multiple inputs, play around with that setting. I've never had to go higher than four. And obviously your frames per second is going to suffer if you're wasting capture frames waiting for the chip to settle. But on webcam, it's only one channel, so we do not have to worry about that. As always, 32-bit is best for using CPU instructions, SSE, and that sort of thing. If you really are out of RAM, you could drop to something else, or, you know, if you want grayscale, that would be fine. But for our modern purposes, we're going to stick with 32-bit. Now, this webcam I'm using is a Logitech C270. 
It is the one I use for doing these videos, which is why you don't see my face on the screen at the moment. Uh, so we're going to set that to 720. Now, I have seen, and in fact I have an older creative camera that is supposed to do 640 by 480, and it doesn't work. And what happens is it, it sits there never getting a frame. It's, it asks for a 640 by 480 frame, and it never gets it, never comes back from the camera. And so that webcam I actually have to run at 350 or 320 by 240 or something like that, or 352 by 240. So if you see that happening, you know, it's just a blank image, capture's not working, try dropping the resolution. Sometimes the drivers report something that the camera can't do. And it's probably a driver issue, because I know that this camera used to do 64, it certainly did under Windows, but of course it's been abandoned on Windows too, so it's pretty useless. This camera I know works, it works well, and will handle 720. Give it a second to come up. You can't see it, but the little light on the camera just came on, and there I am. Hello, everyone. Okay. So we're getting pretty good frames per second, around 15 it should settle at. Uh, now we can actually, there are some things we can do here. You can alter the uh, settings, and these will be stored in the database and restored later on, that sort of thing. Now I improved the interface on this a lot in 1.37. Here in 1336, it's a little crude. So you can just edit this. We could go, uh, most of these values are 0 to 255. So save and that should become a brighter yeah, a little bit. Okay, next thing we can do. Maybe you don't need 15 frames per second. This is because it's a local camera. Um, we're pulling the camera, like give me an image, give me an image, give me an image. So we can set how fast we do that. Uh, and then if we see motion, uh, maybe we want to record a little more. So we could go 15 frames per second for maximum frames per second during an alarm. So if we come back here and I hold still, it should settle out at 10. Actually, I can see that it has. It's just viewing is at 7. 10 frames per second. And if I do a bunch of motion, maybe we should be able to get that up higher. Can we Can we get it higher? No. Oh, a little bit. 10.8. <laughs> well, that should have jumped up to 15, but there could be other mitigating circumstances as to why it did. Okay, well, that's long and short of it. Um, that, I'm going to end this video right there. Uh, that is how you add a webcam or V4L capturing card to ZoneMinder. Stay tuned for further videos. I like to keep these videos short and sweet to a certain task. So if you like that video, please become either a patron or a donate. To, uh, go to zoneminer.com slash donate for her options. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube. You know how it works. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.